suppose you wanted to calculate the change in enthalpy for a multi-step physical change. For example, let's say you've got some ice and you want to figure out the change in enthalpy for a particular amount of ice melting to the liquid and then boiling off as the steam. You can do this because the change in enthalpy, enthalpy itself is a state function. So you can just determine the amount of heat it takes at each step and add it all up to get the total change in enthalpy for any physical change. Let's look at a specific example where we're going to start with cold ice and heat all the way to steam. And the cold ice that we're going to start with is going to be at negative 30 degrees Celsius. And we're going to heat that ice all the way up until it warms up, melts, boils, and then heats the steam up to a positive 130 degrees Celsius. In order to quantify all of that heat and get the total change in enthalpy for that particular system, it's going to take a lot of steps and a lot of different constants. So we're going to start at negative 30 degrees Celsius with our ice, and we're going to end up at 130 degrees Celsius with all steam. Now, the ice, um, in order for uh, ice to melt, you have to get to the melting temperature. So the ice, you'd have to start adding your heat. Imagine you're on the hot plate. You'd have to start adding heat. And let's say we're going to uh, do this for 10 grams of ice. We're going to start with 10 grams of ice. We're going to move through this process until we end up with 10 grams of steam. Okay? All right. So the first thing you're going to have to do is warm up the ice because ice can only melt at its melting temperature, which is 0 degrees Celsius. So uh, you're going to have to add heat, and that ice is going to warm up to 0 degrees Celsius. Then, as you continue to add a heat, the temperature is not going to change. The temperature is going to remain constant as all that ice melts. Then, once all the ice is melted, if you keep adding heat, the temperature will increase until you get to 100 degrees Celsius. That's the boiling temperature for water. And then you keep adding heat. The temperature is going to stay constant as that heat, as that ice, um, excuse me, as that water all boils. Then finally, once it's all uh, boiled, then the heat will be used to increase the temperature of the steam up to 130 degrees. So we have one, two, three, four, five different steps um, that we need to calculate here. Uh, first, to heat the ice, um, to calculate the amount of heat it takes to heat the ice, for this step, this is the heating the ice step right here, to heat the ice, heat ice, we need to know the specific heat for ice. And this step here, this is melting the ice. And to melt the ice, we need to know the heat of fusion for the ice. This step is warming the water, the liquid water. And to um, quantify the heat flow there, we need to know the specific heat of liquid water. We'll just call it water, but we mean liquid water. And then this step here is the um, boiling or the vaporization of the water um, to make steam. So we're boiling here, making the steam. That occurs at 100 degrees Celsius at the boiling temperature. And uh, to quantify heat there, we need to know the heat of vaporization. And then once we've uh, boiled away all of the water, all of the energy has gone into uh, uh, the phase change, change of potential energy, then we can start heating uh, that steam and um, this is the heating the steam phase. And for that, we need the specific heat of steam. The specific heats are different uh, for each different phase of a substance. So we have one, two, three, four, five different steps. So we can account for the heat needed for each of those steps in order to um, calculate it. So let's do that. How much heat is necessary to convert 10 grams of ice at negative 30 degrees Celsius to 10 grams of steam? 
we can use our heat curve here, this is called a heating curve, to keep track of all the different calculations that we need to do. So the first calculation we said, the first calculation we said that we needed to have the specific heat of ice. So the specific heat of ice, um, so the amount of heat it takes to warm the ice is going to equal the specific heat of ice times the amount of ice we have times the change in temperature. How much are we heating? Because the specific heat for ice is equal to 2.09 joules per gram per degree Celsius. And the mass is 10 grams, and the change in temperature there is 30 degrees Celsius. So the amount of heat it takes uh, to warm the ice there is going to be equal to 627 joules. That's for step one. Step two is the amount of heat it takes to um, melt. So for that, we need the enthalpy of fusion times the mass, because the enthalpy of fusion value that I'm going to use is one that's been um, computed in terms of joules per gram of ice times the 10 grams and that's going to be equal to 3040 joules that's the heat for step two step three was the warming of the water so we're warming the water that's going to be equal to the specific heat of water times the mass that we're warming times the change in temperature. And in this case, the specific heat of water is 4.184 joules per gram per degree Celsius. This is um, the definition actually of a calorie is the amount of energy it takes to raise the temperature of water, one gram of water, one degree Celsius. That's one calorie and one calorie is equal to 4.184 joules. So this is how we uh, have to find a calorie, the amount of energy it takes to raise the temperature of water one, uh, one degree Celsius, one gram of water. In this case, we have 10 grams of water, and we're gonna raise the temperature 100 degrees from zero all the way up to its boiling point. And so that's going to be equal to 4,184 joules of energy for that step. For step four, this is the amount of heat it takes to boil. So we'll say vaporize um, all that water. And that's going to be equal to the heat of vaporization times the uh, mass of the water because I have my uh, units, uh, my heat of vaporization value is um, 2,260 joules per gram times 10 grams. That's equal to 22,000. 600 joules. By far the most energy um, cost is for boiling the water because that's a big change in enthalpy going from the particles that are very close together to the particles being far apart in the gas. That's the biggest energy cost there. And then to heat the steam, um, the amount of heat it takes to heat the steam up is going to equal the heat capacity of the steam times the mass times the change in temperature. And in this case, the heat capacity for steam, I looked it up, and it is 2.03 joules per gram of water. We still have the 10 grams of water, and the change in temperature there is 30 degrees because we're going up to 130 degrees Celsius, and that equals um, 609 joules. So the total heat is equal to the sum of the heat from all the steps, summation of all the heats from all the different steps. And uh, I put all those numbers in my calculator and I got 31,360 joules. So the, um, that's a, a positive value. So the change in enthalpy for this particular process is equal to 31.36 kilojoules for the 10 grams of water. Okay, so you can, because uh, enthalpy is a state function, we can figure out the change in enthalpy for a process, and in this case the process was warming ice 
melting ice, warming water, vaporizing water, and heating steam.